Then on Friday, Paul Heyman was confronted by another Roman Reigns opponent and given a stern warning. This time it was not Cody Rhodes, it was Sami Zayn, who said that Roman had eight days left before losing his titles. And what followed then were multiple segments throughout the show involving the Usos and Paul Heyman. And another one with Sami Zayn confronting Jey Uso out in the parking lot to build the Bloodline story up even more. There was the question coming into the show of whether or not Jey Uso would even show up for the Usos SmackDown Tag Team title defense against Braun Strowman and Ricochet, which he did, and they retained. He said, I always got your back. I always got my brother's back. But as far as Roman Reigns and the bloodline, when Jimmy asked him, are you in or are you out? Jay told him, I don't know. And when Paul Heyman asked Jimmy about it, Jimmy lied to him and said, oh, he didn't say anything. There was the segment with Zayn and Jay Uso where Sammy thanked him for what he did and, and really what he did not do at the Royal Rumble. And he told him, the bloodline is on the outs. You don't have to go down with the ship. You should be on the right side of things, not the wrong side. And it ended with Jay returning a fist bump from Sammy. And then finally, at the end of the night, Heyman told Jimmy, look, I, I talked to Roman. I would have put you on the phone with him, but you know, we got bad reception here. I talked to Roman. He wants you and your brother to stay home next week. Don't even come to Montreal. We got things covered. And then the ominous line that, Sometimes you see things watching at home on TV, live on television, that you don't see when you're in the building live. And I didn't pick up on it in my review, but that absolutely was a reference to Roman having watched the segment with Sammy and Jay, and this fact also that Jimmy lied to the wise man. That makes it even better. I figured they only did that to explain why the Usos wouldn't be at TV. Uh, Friday or or the pay-per-view on Saturday because the belief is that they're not allowed into Canada. Uh, or at least Jimmy is not. I'm not totally convinced that's the case with Jay. Now I see Meltzer is claiming he's been told that both Usos have been cleared to travel to Canada and they're good to go. So this could all end up being a swerve. Both Usos may end up being there. But Roman, yeah, the story obviously is that Roman saw those segments watching from home. I don't know uh, how good his uh, television reception is there on the island of relevancy, but obviously he was watching, and that's why Heyman delivered the uh, the line that he did. What does that mean for the future of the Usos and the Bloodline? This the story just keeps getting better. Like I can see where it's going. There are elements of it that are obviously predictable, but the way they're telling the story and the, and the characters involved playing their parts, everybody is knocking it out of the park. It's been, it's been an incredible story. You know, when you're watching a wrestling show, you don't expect the stories to be deep, you know, fucking award-winning performances and, and things like that. But this is the closest thing that WWE has had to something like that in I don't even know how long. It's been amazing. And since Elimination Chamber is this Saturday, that means that it is time for early predictions before I even have a chance to see the two go-home shows this week. So if anything changes based on that, I'll run through my uh, updated predictions on Friday. But here is the card as things stand from what is going to be an electric Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec. The first WWE pay-per-view from Montreal in 14 years since the Breaking Point pay-per-view in 2009 where John Cena and Randy Orton had their I Quit match and they did a Montreal screwjob finish in the CM Punk Undertaker main event. Uh, which is every bit as stupid today as it was back then. You know, being in Montreal is like catnip to this company. It's like they crossed the border and they just can't help but feel like somebody needs to be screwed. Can't help themselves. On SmackDown, Madcap Moss won a fatal four-way match to challenge Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I could have sworn Michael Cole said the match would happen at Elimination Chamber. It's possible they end up doing it the night before. They're going to be in the same building on SmackDown Friday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. I mean, you could do the match any place, any time. It doesn't matter. The outcome will be the same regardless. Gunther retains. It's just a warm body for him to beat before he defends against, hopefully, Sheamus and likely Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Edge and Beth Phoenix take on Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley in a mixed tag team match. It's very likely that Edge and Balor are having a singles match at WrestleMania. Uh, a Hell in a Cell match has been rumored. 
That coupled with the fact that Rhea is challenging Charlotte for her championship, probably in the night one main event at WrestleMania, means the Judgment Day should absolutely pick up the win here. And I think it'll be Rhea pinning Beth to do it. Yeah, the Judgment Day needs at least one win on this show, and I don't think Damian Priest is getting the job done in his match, so I think Balor and Rhea get the job done here. Brock Lesnar goes one-on-one with Bobby Lashley, or uh, as Brock would say, Bobby who? Bobby Lashley. Uh, This is not official yet, but it will be after their contract signing on Raw tomorrow night. I think, I still think they have one more match left at WrestleMania. And because of that, I think they could get away with doing a non-finish here, where neither man wins. Some sort of double DQ or a draw. Uh, It may not be the most satisfying finish, but it could help them get to where they need to go at WrestleMania. They could do a stipulation match at WrestleMania, make it no DQ, so we don't have a repeat of what happened in Montreal. But I'm going to go I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we don't get a winner. We don't get a clear winner in this match between these two. We have the women's elimination chamber match for a shot of the Raw Women's title at WrestleMania with Asuka, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia and Carmella. Uh this should be Asuka's spot. There is no better choice. I look at the six women in this match, there is no better choice for the winner than Asuka. And it'll be Bianca defending against the murder clown at WrestleMania. Lita saved Becky Lynch from an attack by damage control on Monday night, as I mentioned. Becky and Lita, or possibly Becky, Lita, and Trish against damage control, is rumored for the Elimination Chamber. Which, if if that's the case, they're going to have to announce it tomorrow night. And Dakota Kai has been walking around with a brace on her knee on crutches coming out of the Royal Rumble. So I don't even know what her status would be. I don't even know if she'll be cleared in time for this weekend. I could see Becky, Trish, and Lita against all three members of Damage Control as a WrestleMania match. But they might want to do it this weekend. Trish and Canada. I mean, they already have enough Canadian representation on this show. You got Edge, Natty's in the chamber, Sammy's in the main event. Uh, but I could see them wanting to do Trish in Canada. So uh, if it happens, if the match does happen this weekend, then it's going to be a win for Team Becky. We have the United States Championship for the first time ever, up for grabs in the Elimination Chamber with Austin Theory defending against Seth Rollins, Johnny Gargano, Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, and Montez Ford. It's a great mix of talent here. You got a number of different options. You could argue... For every single person in this match as a potential winner. If Priest wins, he brings gold into the Judgment Day. Bronson Reed has been a beast since he came back. I would love to see him take it. I would not be beating him this soon. In a match like this, it's not like you're going to get counted out or you're going to get disqualified. You You gotta be beat. I would not beat him this quickly. Since he just came back, he just debuted on the main roster. He just debuted on TV not that long ago. If it were my choice, I'm giving the U.S. title to Bronson Reed. Seth Rollins doesn't need the belt back, and he's already got his match with Logan Paul pretty much set for WrestleMania. And Austin Theory is wrestling John Cena most likely at WrestleMania. He doesn't need the U.S. title for that. But I think he retains. My prediction is that Austin Theory walks in with the U.S. title He walks out with the U.S. title. I don't think they're going to want him losing before the match with Cena. At first, I felt differently. It felt to me like the whole reason for doing this was to get the belt off of him before WrestleMania. But now, I look at this, I think he's keeping it. I think it works better if he loses it because it makes the Mania match a little more unpredictable without a belt being on the line. Because we all know John Cena is not sticking around after WrestleMania. I don't know how many times we'll even get him on TV before WrestleMania. Supposedly, they taped something at the end of December with him and and Theory in the back. That may be the only segment we get from Cena before WrestleMania, is a taped segment from December. He's in Australia right now, dressing up like a woman (laughs) for some movie. I saw the pictures this week. So, I'm not even sure how available he'll be for this match, let alone coming out of WrestleMania. So if there's a championship on the line in this match, then you know John Cena is not winning it. Without a title on the line, the result could go either way. You can argue that Cena's going to win because he's the bigger star, or Theory's going to win because he's the up-and-coming star and Cena's there to put him over. But at least it's a little less predictable that way. 
But Cena is a former U.S. champion. He did the open challenge gimmick for a while. I could see Theory coming out of the chamber gloating about how now he's the greatest United States champion of all time. And that then leads into the program with Cena. But I, I honestly, I look at the six men in this match. I would not have a problem with any of them uh, winning the championship. Reed would be my preferred choice, but I think it'll be Theory. And in the main event, Roman Reigns defends the undisputed WWE Universal Championship against Montreal's own Sami Zayn. I have not looked forward to a match like this in a very long time. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think a lot of people will be disappointed when Sammy does not win the titles, because he is not. Uh, but I don't have any other expectations that uh, he will. But that doesn't make this... Uh, I don't think this makes the main event any less big. I don't think it's going to make it any less fun to watch, especially in that building. But the match itself, I expect this is going to be a great main event. Right, we know what Sami Zayn brings to the table. Roman Reigns has had countless great main events with different people. A great main event with Logan Paul in Saudi Arabia, right? So I don't expect this match to be anything but great. The question is, what do they do for a finish? Because Sami is not winning the titles. Roman Reigns is, is going to win. Roman Reigns is going to retain his titles, right? That I, I don't even think that's in dispute. And I hope that we don't get a Montreal screw job here because they're in Montreal. We got to do a screw job. No, hopefully that does not happen here. Because uh, then you're just going to get people hopeful that they're going to add Sammy to the main event at WrestleMania, and that's it's not going to happen. The question really is more about the Usos. Will they or won't they be there? Based on the angle they did at the end of SmackDown Friday, they won't be. Now Meltzer is saying that they're both cleared to travel to Canada, which would mean that if they want them there, they can be there. The main person that really should be there and would need to be there is Jey Uso. Jey Uso back with his brother, right? He, he teamed with him on Friday. I'm not, I would never leave you hanging. But on the subject of Roman and the bloodline, he wasn't ready to give him an answer about whether or not he's in or out. I think that answer comes on Saturday. I think at the very least, Jey Uso does show up. And I think he makes his choice. And he factors into this finish, ultimately leading to Roman Reigns beating Sami Zayn, who perhaps even has the match won. But it's the Usos. It's Jey who get involved and cost him the match. Roman retains. Sammy gets beaten down and pulverized after the match until Kevin Owens, his first appearance since the Royal Rumble when he was handcuffed to the ropes, makes his uh, triumphant return. Big pop for KO in Montreal. He makes the save and we get the reunion. We get the embrace at the end of the night with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, which then, of course, leads to them challenging the Usos for the tag team titles. They have their own big run going, by the way. By the time we get to WrestleMania, they will be well over 600 days as tag team champions. It'll be KO and Sammy challenging for the tag belt at WrestleMania. Those are my thoughts on the Elimination Chamber, which, of course, I will have live coverage for on YouTube as soon as the pay-per-view is over Saturday night. So I expect you all to be there with bells on. They're going to be at the Bell Center. So I expect you all to be uh, present with bells on on Saturday night when I go live. 